I would never wanted to record the class. But I wanted that those who, who miss the class should suffer a bit. Okay, let me just work out for you see. So you guys can see that, for example, uh, you have this zone and also there was a buy to sell candle here. This buy to sell candle as well is, was another zone. And you see when price came back to the buy to sell zone, there was re a reaction before the market went up again. So all of these things, these zones that we are identifying based on a buy to sell candle, drop base drop, other block, uh, resistance, all of them are point of interest. It, it, that means we are interested in trading there. That means if you were a Forex trader, you wouldn't have thought like, okay, you would have thought to, to sell here, not to sell here. You would only think maybe to sell around here, around this, because there's a pure order block here. There was a perfect order block here and we had a reaction there. And this was one point would have thought to sell and maybe have another second point. So in Forex trading, if you have placed a sell here in the first point here and it fails, then you will not, you will not just add more position at random. You probably may have to wait for the market to meet up again, another key zone before you add another position. I hope you understand me. So my problem is just to show you what draws your attention to the previous trend that can give you a possibility to the current trend. It goes those again, if you wish you switch back to the, to the, to the daily, to the early time frame. Now this other point that we had here on the one day, if you go on the one hour, you don't see any significant structure here. You now understand this. And even here you could not see. So that's why Forex analysis is done with the top-down analytic approach. So if I go to the weekly chart, I don't see any meaning. I'll have to go to the one day. If I go to the one day, I don't see any meaning. I'll go to the four hours. So when I see it on the one hour for the on the one week, for example, that structure will be more significant to me in the long run. Like, okay, for example, after this market came to this point, we had a drop to the downside. So when this market was dropping here, if you ask me that, okay, on the, on the weekly chart, where are the zones which I think that they are valuable in this downtrend? I will see, okay, here we had a, an order block, which was like a drop base drop. So this one point of interest, point of interest one, and now that's not all. We also have an other block here, which was with a diminishes candle. So we have point of interest too. So now, now we have two point of interest. In Forex trading, if we are having a pullback based on a technique called Fibonacci, which I showed you the other time, if you take the Fibonacci indicator and put from where the movement started eh, at this top and pull down, for example, you are going to realize that we need to start thinking a reversal after 50%, like from 61%, 70%. And so when we take at, this is 50% here, eh? this is 61 here, and this is 78 here. So I will begin, if this market is pulling back, there is a huge doubt in my mind if this particular zone will be respected. You understand now? And I think, possible way that this other one probably here will be respected than this one. Now we then come to what we call the premium and the discounted price. The discounted price is any price below 50% Fibonacci and the premium price is any price above 50%, 50% above 50% Fibonacci level. So I will think more of premium prices whenever I'm doing my analysis. So let, let's let this play and let's see what happens, okay? Let this thing play. I'll add a speed a little bit. So, this is how the weekly candle was making up. Like, this is how it was playing. You see, a candle can turn 
blue, and then turn back red. But the color of candles should not mimic your feelings or your sentiment. So remain up to your technicals and forget what happens sometimes with the color of the candles. Anybody that would have bought this red candle, this candle you turn blue and red, the person will go out of the market. And now when the price approaches our first point of interest, the size and the momentum were too big for this point to contain a reversal. So definitely there will be a pure break based on the candle one week view. When price approaches our second point of interest, you can see quite well that when the candle put its head inside the zone, there was a perfect rejection. You put it now. And in the second week, the market now continues itself. So definitely means that our second point of interest was best premium price where you could trade this market than any other zone. You now understand, price is not struggling to go back probably to our, and maybe to our zone. So you need to be able to know how the market moves. For the fact that market is struggling to go back there, doesn't mean in any way that a sell would not hold. Remember, we are on the weekly chart. It definitely means that it could be a pullback again of this movement, or price could be struggling to validate a pattern that is equal to that of reversal. Price could also be looking to mitigate some zones. So if you go maybe to the, to the, to the daily time frame, you will see the price action very well. So you see how the market comes here and we acted on this zone perfectly. And when you break our zone here, it came and tested on this zone, like it breaks it, came and tested and can have a pullback a little bit. Now, when price pullback, you guys can see that for you to identify like this current movement here, for you to identify where price can pull back to, you can see a drop base drop. So this is a possible supply zone based on the drop base drop. So I can see when price pulled back, it came back into the drop base drop and the market began to sell. My friends, you need to be very intelligent. Everything is on your chart. And that is why I will give an assignment last time that people should go on their previous trend and try as much as possible to look for trade opportunities. And you can see here, price came here and the market continues selling at this level. So my friends, if we play off this again, you can see how this candle moves on daily basis. See how now it's selling now so massively. And this time around, it breaks this support zone. And after breaking the support zone, there was what we call the break and the retest of the support. So market break, then came back, retested the support, then went down, and then came back the second time on the support. Look at the price action, like, when you look at the price action that it really occurs in those zones, it can mean something to you. Now, let me hold this guy a little bit here. Let, let it go a little bit more, and I'll hold it, and then I will then show you a smart trick for trading, because, uh, at the end of the day, my friends, you need to be able to, to see how these guys play up on a daily basis. So these people understand that, that majority of Forex traders understand what we call break and retest. So they kind of break, retest for the first time. Now, those who took the first break, retest technique have made money. Now, secondly, they come back to retest the structure the second time, knowing fully well because what they want and what they need is enough liquidity to continue selling this market. And if everybody continues selling this market, then they are going not to make money. So they know that you people are going to sell again for the second time and your stop loss is going to slightly be above this uh, resistance. And that is why they brought this candle to wick out all of your stop loss. And again, the market continued to sell. So somebody who sold the second uh, retaste is not wrong. But if you sold the second retaste 
and your stop loss was two pip, then you would have made any money. Run away. Listen to me attentively. Run away from those people that tells you they know how the banks trade and their stop loss is two pips. Their stop loss is one pip. You need to give enough room for even manipulation and use a small lot size. Let's assume that someone who entered this market with $1 per pip and the stop loss was about 30 pips will still be have been hit. 150 will still be have been hit. So this stop loss hung went up to 100 pips. So one thing that would have saved you from here, probably if you were trading a $500 account, and your, and, your, and your lot size was 0 0.1, you could still have gone out of this trade without blowing your account. So when they talk about lot sizing, some people think that is for jokes. If you are able to cover, if you, if you have a $500 account and you are trading $1 per pip, it's very reasonable and it's okay. Do you know that you can double this account in a week? If you are able to secure, to secure 100 pips each day on a $500 account, then you can make $100 times five. That is definitely, if you can make just 50, 50 pips per week, then you can double a $500 account in two weeks, which is very, very sufficient for somebody living in Cameroon. You, you understand? So, this was a stop hunt of over 100 pips. And I will be keep on showing you how all of these stuffs occur. Like for example, a Forex trader need to prepare his mind for all the troubles that come in the market. And you need to understand everything. Like for example, market comes up to this level. It's a good point to sell. People sell and they are holding their sell position happily. Now, they come and see price going back against them and slightly even go above where they enter. Like you see, if you if you have entered this market here, for example, your stop loss value need to be a little bit high above here, like maybe here. You see that they come down and then they come back and weak above your entry. This, they are looking for your stop loss. They, time, they may as if they want to sell this market again and come back to frighten you again the second time. If you would have, if you would have entered many many positions just on this one candle when you are excited, you definitely may find out that you have gone out of this market forcefully, without nobody telling you. You would have run out of the market. So the only thing is risk management, and also the ability to see where the real movement takes off. And you need to also understand that when price come to a zone, the real movement does not just really take off most at time like that. Like for example, the market came here and the market had to buy. If you should have bought here, you would have been patient for some days before this market finally buys. So patient is a virtue in the forest market. Let's count. Anybody that bought here at the beginning is not wrong. But if that person was unable to hold this buy position for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days, that means over a week, if you were unable to hold this position over the week or close and re-enter again, maybe here, and you see market push up again, or you re-entered here, if you are unable to hold for a while, then you should be able to close and then enter again. But sometimes you close before you want to discover market has gone that you have not entered again. So patient is extremely needed in every Forex trading career. But now the only thing that you can hold, make you hold a position for a long time is risk management. Because if you enter a very huge position and the market is going against you, you can have high block. So the only thing is that you should close the trade. So one key secret is managing your risk and having patience, be able to wait, okay? So if you play a game, you come to understand that this is how the market goes, does. It comes again right down here and then make as if you want to, to come back up again. Let it keep playing and you will see at the end result how everything does goes. But whenever you find a market not in a swift movement like this, that means they are still gathering momentum. You now see for yourself, anybody that entered this market and was not patient, 
would have missed this perfect movement. So if you would have entered this market here and you refused to be patient, you would have missed this perfect movement. You would have missed this perfect move, this sweet movement to the downside. You would have missed it. So somehow, we should be able to say, okay, I'm able to hold this trade for two days. Yes. And anybody that held this trade for like two, three days on a swing, just imagine you enter here knowing fully well that, okay, this was a stop one manipulation. And you're able to execute a trade here and hold for about two weeks. Just imagine how much you have made, about 500 pips. And the secret is in the holding. Because when you close the trade here, for example, you have, you have closed your perfect entry. You may come and enter a mess up somewhere around here and then you lose money. So we need to be patient. We need to be able to say, okay, I'm holding on to this trade. I'm gonna hold this trade for two days. I'm going to enter this trade. I am sure this is a perfect point. I'm going to place my stop loss. I must not look for a new entry on Tuesday, on Monday. I'm going to enter because I want to pick the big move because I know this market is going to go down. So that's it. And as when the market keeps going down, right, you are focused in identifying past structures of importance in the previous trend. Like for example, if you want to look at this movement here, we can barely say that, okay, we have this, resistant where this market came from. That is the ability of analyzing the previous trends. We have this resistance here. Okay, good. Market can come to that resistance. And also we have this point where the bank did a, a, a buy to sell. So there was a fooling of a buy to sell and then they also did a buy to sell. So generally this zone, we have a buy manipulation. So the banks did some manipulation. So some of the others could still be left in this point of interest. So those are how you can be thinking like, okay, you've missed this cell. What if you want to look again for another cell? So those cells should be in this area of, of interest that you have identified below you. We are not talking about uh, finding a confirmation to sell or buy here, but we are trying to talk about looking at points where the market could react on, on the previous trend. We are still on the fact that Students or traders must have the ability to look for what we call area of interest because that is what they want. They want to trade on area of interest. They want to trade something that um, they want to trade on area of interest uh, and they need to be able to look for area of interest on their chart. Okay. And when they see an area of interest, they need to stick to the valuable area of interest no matter what. They need to stick to it because. Uh, it is the only stuff that's going to give them a, a perfect trade at the end of the day and uh, so on and so forth. So as market goes, those other point of interest begin to come up in a market like you have this one here. Uh, price react to it based on a double top formation. You have this one. And market goes. Here, we had another one here. A drop base drop, which market came reacted to it on a short term and uh, we find price somewhere here that has put a little bit down and we are seeing at where we are currently. So all of these structures will matter when identifying further areas. And also we need to pay attention to market structures as well. So, when we look at these, you now find out that it's quite vital for you to pay attention to most of the key structures. So if you ask me, for example, like Ronnie, before I go down to the daily time frame, I would have analyzed the weekly for that day of the previous trend before going down. So like currently now, a lot of people are on the GU chat. And if you were to ask me, Ronnie, are you sure that, okay, GU is going to go down from here permanently? I will like a, be a little Thomas. I will be like a Thomas because if I want to like uh, look at this market personally, I will see that there was a kind of, I can break down this structure into two great moves. 
So we, are, we had like a kind, even a monthly chat can be, can be of help. So somehow when we go to further analytics, where we need a lot of brains, like, okay, we, we may find ourselves going on the monthly chat. If you go on the monthly chat, you're going to you guys realize that uh, this particular movement here was a very swift movement, okay? And uh, at, that, at, this, at this level, we have a very keen point of interest that uh, I saw already on the weekly, which is this zone here. And uh, this tip here is quite important because we had like a drop base drop somewhere around there. So if you go back on the on the on the weekly time frame, you can see that structure quite well, and that structure is from behind here. So it was from behind here. This is where we had a a sell momentum that definitely took down this market so well. And if we were to put put off Fibonacci here, if we put off Fibonacci from this tip to this bottom here, you are going to realize that uh, sixty one percent like here is a 61% level and above is from this structure. So I am looking at, okay, price could come a little bit up here before the market sells. So that is in the long term. Now, then the question you should be asking yourself is, then why is price struggling to go down here? Now, price is struggling to go down there because it's going to fool a huge mass and also those who do position training or long time trading swing traded traders as well. So these institutions, because they are very intelligent, they know that since you have seen, be able to see these structures like, okay, on the weekly, for example, you've been able to see a double top, right? Okay, this was gonna happen here. Um, maybe uh, you have been able to see a perfect double top, fine. You are excited that the market is going down and everybody here thinks that uh, GU is gonna sell massively, okay? So what happens is they are going to be coming back small, small, and you think that it will be a pullback, like, okay, you'll be thinking of selling more, and when you sell, you continue buying. You will keep of selling more, when you sell, you continue buying. You will think of selling again here, you sell, you continue buying. At this point in time, many people will still enter that sell because they are confident of the double top. Now, don't, don't forget, there is liquidity above double bottom, there is liquidity above double top. That means there, there are people stop loss below and above those structures. And so it means that a lot of people holding sell position here, their stop loss is just slightly above here before the institutions will get to their others that it was on field here. You now understand. So what happened now to this is that when they will take price back to this point, they will click all of these stop loss. And once they get to this stop loss clearance, all of these people holding sell position will be scared that GU now is about continuing the uptrend. And since now they are going to be scared, they are going to close all of this sell position, the two here, they are going to close all of the sell position. And in the forest exchange market, where you close the sell position, then you are buying the market. So what happens is, these people now are willing to buy this market at a very higher price as compared to the price that the market left for. So you find now amateur traders and beginner traders closing sell position by manual and also by stop loss. And also those who place buy position up here as well will all jump into the liquidity bag. And so the institutions are able now to sell the market at a very high price. And so they'll be able to sell this market because there is enough buy liquidity because you have closed your sell positions and you have provided buy liquidity in this market and the market will be able to sell from here. So whenever you see a double top or a double bottom, my dear friends, know that there is a trap for you just above it. <laughs> you understand? So there's a trap for you just above it. And I'll prove to you again and again and again and again, thousand times. So that's why now this is still under the concept of identifying what uh, previous point of actions uh, in a previous trend. Now, trading those zooms, we have to take some time. Okay, definitely, because I will give you like a week to be able to identify this important zone on previous trend. On your practical session, the whole of this week, I would like to see the beginners traders going on the chat and identifying this zone for me because it is quite vital, okay? 
So now, if you if you want to look here, for example, you see a double top, right? A double top. So this is exactly what happens. These guys now they begin to take price like against, and they're going up. Many people begin to think, okay, it's a pullback. Let's sell. They go close here. Okay, no, there was a double M shape here. Let's sell. Okay, let's sell. Okay, to the to the double top. Okay, let's sell again. And what happens to these guys? Their stop loss, all of them are just above here. And what happened? These guys they come up and clear all of your stop loss. And all these people that sold here and willing to sell here are now willing to close their sell position because they're in huge loss and they have provided enough buy liquidity. Like they are, they are willing to buy this market at a higher price and they'll provide enough sell liquidity, sorry. So this market now will then sell from here. You see, the candle that left this zone was so massive. That proved that there was an institutional price action that entered here. And this market sold for a great number of pips before now trying to form again a double a double bottom so that it can help clean people off the market. It's true that this guy can continue selling down, no problem. And if it is if it is that it has to continue selling down, I will only trade this trend, for example, this trend that is going down currently. I will only trade this trend based on previous actions. Like, okay, if I was to trade this market now, I now know quite well that there was a good other block here. So I will only sell this market if price come back to the other block, full stop. So, but now at the moment, I have no reason like, okay, this maybe could just be an aggressive sell continuation, but not a, not a, uh, a passive sell with less risk. Like this opportunity here was a sell with less risk. But some people, when market will open on Monday, they will still look for sell position here. You get it. But now you now not your 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 selling or buying here cannot be long term. So you need to now look for smaller time frame like the 15 minute to help you to enter small, small trade, grab small, small number of pips, and then you go out of the market. So day traders entry and going out, okay. But it will not really be a swing trade like this one that went for a great number of pips like you. If you have entered this market here and hold, this will like give you close to a hundred or something pips and all whatnot. So you could still trade this market regardless of, of these, but you need to have a clear point of interest in your mind. So uh, I still remain on the focus. I don't want to get into trading from point of interest because if you are able to identify a point of interest, then now we will then learn how to trade from the point of interest. So today, guys, uh, I believe that you can go home now and then do practicals on the on point of interest. Try as much as possible as you can identify more point of interest on your chart and it can help you go a long way to improve your trade. And that's all. So we'll see you definitely next Friday. And uh, your practical for Monday to Thursday is identification of point of interest on previous trends. So the previous trend should mostly focus on the daily and the weekly time frame. So you look at the current market movement and then you focus on the previous. Like for example, this is the current market movement for GBP USD and this is the previous. So what you are focused on identifying on the previous are different point of interest or value. You should be able to identify and then you label it. So it must have a name because I taught you abbreviation. If at all, your point of interest here is an order block, then right there on order block, you create a template for order block. If your point of interest here is a double top or an M shape, then draw this blue line and probably right above this blue line an M shape. I'm not going to tell you how to draw it. Let me just, I never wanted to tell you how to write, but let me just show you. If for example, I draw a line like this, I want to write on this line, there is always a certain button for each tool that you draw. So I'll go to certain button. On that certain button, you see text. I'll click on text and I'll just take, I'll just write a M shape, for example. Now, I'll, they'll ask you text alignment, bottom, center, or where. So I want it to be at the top of the scenes in an M shape, at the center, top, and at the center. Okay. So, and then the characteristic you want it, I wish maybe 20. 
Now, if you want to save this as a template, you save as a template. So the next time you will not be able to, you will not pass your time writing again. You just go to template and select the M shape template. So for example, if you want to save as template, you click on template, you take save, and then you put a name. You can just put M shape, just put M there, and then you save, and then you take okay. So you see now on this line, it has been written M shape. So if I want to convert this other line to M shape, I'll just click on this line or, or I will left click, left click and I go to template and I look for M, see? And the writing of M shape will appear above it. Same happened for this zone. Maybe this zone was a, an OB. So you have to click on that, okay? And then you go to setting, you go to text and you write OB there, other block. And you can save this as other block if you want. And you save, okay, okay. And you see, uh, I didn't put the text alignment. So definitely he has to, we need to always tell these guys where we want to put our text alignment. So we are going to certain, I want this text to be at inside the box, okay. And also at the center. So it will be inside the box and also the visibility. The visibility is quite important. You need to be visible on all time frames. So definitely, if I if I go to the weekly, probably I'm gonna see this OB has been written inside this, and you can see it. So you need to learn how to annotate the structures that you identify, so that I can clearly see that your point of interest in an other block based on that time frame. Like for example, there is an other block here. So if I go here, for example, I've had template for other blocks. I'll just draw this. I'll go under my template. I'm going to look for OB and, and that's it. It just appear on it, OB. I don't have to be writing all the time. So if it's, if it's a rally-based rally, I have an annotation for rally-based rally. I'll just draw it and I go to template and I mark it up. So that's how you can now write and annotate some few things on your structure. So I never wanted to show this. I never, I wanted you to stress very well, but there is no need stressing on something that is not important because annotation will never bring you money in the market, but it's actually gonna make your work beautiful. But so why should I stress you on something that will not, that is not really that important. So guys go do that and I see you next week. See you in your various WhatsApp group. Fee clearance, clear up your fee, do a gesture. By today, 6 p.m. I'm gonna clear off fee owing and uh, nobody gonna be owing in the community because I'm looking forward from Monday to put a lot of energy into the community, a lot of energy, a lot of energy I'm gonna put in for you and for me too. Have a great day, my friends. Pray for me. Pray that God should give me much money. Pray that one day I should be able to buy a private jet for myself. 